Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we're going to keep looking with the statement of cash flows, operating sections as well. However, we're going to be using the direct method. This topic is covered in intermediate accounting and it's heavily covered on the CPA FAR exam section. Also, this session would help you tremendously converting from cash to accrual or accrual to cash. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn, YouTube, or where you need to subscribe. I have 1,500 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses and the number of lectures I cover for each course. And I do also have CPA questions. On my website, I have you have access to additional resources such as notes, PowerPoint slides, true, false, multiple choice, quasi CPA simulations, and 2000 plus CPA practice questions. So to illustrate the direct method, we will work an example. But before we work an example, let's take a look at the indirect method as a review. So you'll be given an income statement. Uh, this is an income statement. Uh, you'll be giving two years of balance sheet. So this is the two year of balance sheet. Okay, for this example. And basically, I'm going to scroll down and show you the indirect method statement completed. So this is the indirect method. We start with net income, then we make the appropriate adjustments such as adding back depreciation expense. There was an increase in receivable. We subtracted it. There was an increase in inventory. We subtracted it. There was an increase in prepaid asset. We subtracted it. Those three are assets. Then we had an increase in liability, which we add. We had an increase in another liability, which we add. And those are all operating assets and operating liabilities. So net income was 112. We net all the increases and decreases. Net cash provided by operating is 19,000. And this is using the indirect method. So what we did in the indirect method, we, we basically did a reconciliation between net income and cash flow. Basically, we explained the difference between net income, which is 112, and net cash flow from operating activity, net cash flow from operating. So that's basically the indirect method. This is what it showed us. Okay. And this is what the people that advocate the, uh, uh, the direct met the indirect method, they said it shows both net income, then it shows how much your income would have been if it was, uh, if, uh, if it was use it, if you were using the cash basis. Now we're going to go back to the same example. And which is this is this income statement here, which is for this company. And the uh, the balance sheet for two year balance sheet, which is we need a two year balance sheet January 1st, and December 31st, beginning and ending. And we have the income statement. Now we're going to prepare the direct method. The direct method is a little bit different. The direct method, you're going to take the income statement items and each item starting with sales revenue, you're going to take the sales revenue and convert into cash received from customers. So the sales revenue is 718,000. That's, that's good. Now what we need to do, we need to take this number and convert the sales revenue into how much actually cash you received. This is what matter because we want to turn sales revenue into cash receipt. So what do we do? We need to examine the accounts that affect sales revenue and that's account receivable. So we notice that account receivable started with zero increased by 15,000. So the net increase is 15,000. So let's go back and convert this, the first number. But before, before we convert, let's just take a look at what do we mean by uh, operating cash operating cash flow, basically taking cash receipts from operation, which is sales as well as uh, dividend and interest received minus cash payments, such as cash paid to suppliers, employees, operating expenses, interest and taxes. We subtract those two, we'll get net cash provided by operating activities. So let's go to this example and let's convert sales into cash receipts from customers. So this is how you always convert sales revenue to cash receipts from customers. So you want to know how much cash was received. So what you do is you start with sales revenue, which is an accrual number, 780. 
780, 780,000 coming from the income statement. Then you would do the following. You will add any decrease in account receivable. So if account receivable went down, you would add to cash flow. If account receivable went up, you will subtract from cash flow. If account receivable went up, it means you are selling more on account than receiving cash from customers. And what happened here, AR went, so if we look at AR, it went from zero to 15,000. So there was an increase of 15,000. We look at this increase, we say, well, 718, it was an increase, therefore we subtract 15,000. So cash receipt from customers is 765. And this is what I just said, sales revenue minus an increase in receivable because your receivable went up, it means your cash went down. It means you are selling more on credit. So part of the seven, another way to look at it, of the 780,000, 15,000 is on account and 765 is cash sales. This is the cash sales and this is all what I care about. And this was on account. And this is basically the analysis of the account receivable. You start with a balance of zero. This is the T account. Sales revenue was increased by 780. How do I know this? Total sales was 780, but I end up with 15. It means I received 765, which is the same thing as this one here. So always make sure you know this formula. To convert sales revenue to cash receipts from customers, you take, you take sales revenue plus any decrease minus any increase in receivable. Okay? And we're done with this. We're done with this. Therefore, on the statement of cash flow, you would say, okay, this is another another way to see this sales revenue 780 minus the increase in receivable. On a cash basis, you received 765,000. And what you do, this is your cash flow and cash received from customers 765. We're done with the first figure. Now we're gonna convert the second item, which is cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold is an expense, 450,000. So we're gonna start with 450,000 as a negative, as a cash payment. Then we're gonna determine how much actually we paid for the cost of goods sold. We know on a cruel basis it's 450. So to convert cost of goods sold into cash payment, you need to examine two accounts and those are inventory, because you buy inventory that turns into cost of goods sold and they told us accounts payable deals with cost of goods sold. So you need to examine those two accounts. So you will start with, let me first get you the formula. Let's just do the same thing as we did with with the with the ads with the receivables. Okay, let's see if we can capture everything. Yes. Okay. So the formula the formula is the following. So for for cost of goods sold, you have to you have to do two things. You have to start with your cost of goods sold as a negative. It's an expense. Remember, cost of goods sold is an expense. And what we started with is 450, which is already an expense. And you add to it any increase in inventory. So you add more cash outflow. So if inventory went up, that's a negative cash. Okay? If inventory went down, that's a positive cash. It means you have less cash expenses because your inventory went down, it means you sold the inventory. Also, after you, after you, after you examine your inventory, you have to examine your accounts payable. If your accounts payable went up, that's positive cash. If your accounts payable went down, that's negative cash. It means you paid cash to bring down your uh, payable. Now, let's start with, with our examples. We started with cost of goods sold of 450. Then inventory increased by 160 because we started at zero. Inventory started at zero, end up at 160. So this was the inventory account. Therefore, inventory went up. If inventory went up, that's an increase to the expenses. It's been negative cash. It means we spent cash. Therefore, minus 160, we're down to 610. And this is going to give us how much we purchased. We expensed 450 and we have still have an inventory 160 more. It means we purchased 610. Why? Because inventory went up. Inventory went up. It means we spent cash. Okay? We spent cash. Now, 
We know our purchases is six ten, so we're gonna we're done with the first. We're done. We're done with this part of cost of goods sold. Now the opposite would have been true if inventory went down. If inventory went down, we would have less of an expense because it means we sold the inventory more than we bought it. Okay. Now we'll start with purchases, which is six ten. Then we need to determine what happened to our accounts payable. Again, accounts payable, just like inventory, went up by sixty thousand. It went from zero to sixty thousand. It went up. It means I bought more stuff on account. I bought sixty thousand of the six ten on account. If I bought sixty thousand on account from the six ten, it means I only paid cash five hundred and fifty. Five hundred and fifty. So notice my accounts payable went up. It means I did not spend cash. I spent less cash. If my accounts payable would have went down, then it will be an addition. Then I will add that decrease. Okay. So I end up paying five hundred and ten thousand. And what I did, I went from cost of goods sold to cash paid, cash payment to suppliers. You need to analyze two accounts for cost of goods sold. And this is the T account. You started with zero, end up with sixty. You purchased 610, so your accounts payable was increased by 610, but you end up with 60. It means you made payment of 550, therefore you still owe 60,000 because you paid 610. You purchased, not you paid, you purchased 610, but you end up with 60,000 unpaid balance. That means you paid 550. Okay, it means you paid 550. And let's look at another. Okay, so we start with cost of goods sold. Add the increase in inventory, deduct the decrease in payable. You end up with a cash basis, 550. Now you start with cash payments to suppliers. You paid 550. Done with this item. Okay, sales. We're done with sales. Done with cost of goods sold. Gross profit is sales minus cost of goods sold. We don't need to do anything with that. Okay, let's look at operating expenses. Operating expenses are 160. And we are told here that prepaid expenses, which is an asset, and accrued expenses, which is a liability, relate to our operating expenses. It means we have to convert operating expenses into how much cash paid for operating expenses. And we are told two accounts relate to this. Those two accounts are prepaid and accrued. And they both went up. Prepaid and up went up by eight. Accrued expenses went up by 20. So let's see if we could do this. So I'm going to start with 160, basically as a negative because it's an expense, it's a cash payment. Then I'm going to say, well, prepaid expenses went up. Remember, if asset went up, it means negative cash. How did I acquire? Ex how did I acquire my prepaid expenses? I had to pay for them, so it's negative 8,000. Okay, because my prepaid went up. So prepaid went from zero to 8,000, that's a negative. Now I'm up to negative 168. Now I, I'm also told that accrued expenses relate to this account. Well, accrued expenses is a liability. So this is a liability account, went from zero to 20, it went up. Well, if I'm not paying, my expenses will go up. If I'm not paying, it means I am paying less 20,000 in my operating expenses. Therefore, I end up only paying 148,000. And this is how I converted the 160 to 148,000 in cash paid. So I started with 160, added the 8,000, subtracted the 20. And here's the formula. Cash payment for operating expenses equal to operating expenses. Add any increase in prepaid or subtract any decrease. For liabilities, add any decrease, subtract any increase. And here's what we did. We took 110 plus 8 minus 20. Get the cash basis 148. Cash paid, to, cash paid for operating expenses 148. We're done with operating expenses. Let's take a look at the next expense. The next expense is depreciation expense. Let me highlight this. So we need to convert depreciation expense to a cash expense. Well, this is already a non-cash. So what do we do? We ignore. Also, we ignore any losses. We ignore any gain. Remember what we learned about those gains and losses? They are non-cash. So any non-cash expense, depreciation, amortization, bet that expense, losses, gains, 
okay any any anything that you can think of that's non-cash already you cannot convert it into cash okay so we don't do anything from a, from indirect method we ignore this we ignore any non-cash expenses or revenues for that matter any non-cash expenses or revenues okay so we're done with depreciation income before taxes is 330 minus 170 income tax expense income tax expense is 48. now we need to know if we need to convert income tax expense well we need to take a look at the balance sheet and when we, what do we need to do we need to see if there's anything on the balance sheet that relate to income tax expense so let's look at the balance sheet that we are given in this example okay we are given cash receivable inventory prepaid expenses property accrued payable accrued expenses well guess what there's nothing it doesn't tell us anything about any income taxes payable or prepaid taxes so guess what if income tax expense is 48 it means we paid cash 48 that's it because there's nothing to analyze now if we had a liability let's assume we had let's assume we had income taxes payable and we starting with zero and went went up to four thousand ten thousand if it went up ten thousand it means we paid less ten thousand it means our cash paid will be 38 because we expense ten thousand on account because our account uh, our income taxes payable went up and the opposite would have been true if accounts payable went down we would have added it means we paid more taxes than what we expensed on the income statement and that's basically that's basically it so, so there's 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 no reason to convert income tax expense because there's no adjustments we don't have any taxes payable income taxes payable or income taxes uh, yes income taxes payable or prepaid expenses sometimes you prepay your expenses which is an asset you, you you analyze it as if it's an asset so also let me let me mention this for this account you could have a prepaid taxes which is some some companies do I remember when I was in practice I still do it when you prepay your taxes so basically if you have a prepaid taxes and your prepaid taxes went up that will be a negative that you will add the negative to the 48,000 if your prepaid expenses went down it means you are using your prepaid then it will be a positive then if it went down it will be a positive adjustment if we are dealing with the prepaid taxes we do have prepaid here but it has prepaid expenses and they told us already those prepaid expenses has to do with the operating expenses so we don't have to worry about the taxes then let's look at the complete cash flow the indirect met the direct method income taxes 48 so cash received from customers 468 paid to supplier 550 paid to supplier 148 income tax expense 48 total cash payment for 746 total cash receipts 468 net cash provided is 19. this is no surprise because under the notice under the under the indirect method what did we get we also got 19,000. so notice those are side by side both the indirect method which is 19,000 and the direct method 19,000 again people that prefer the indirect method they say it reconcile it shows you what is your net income it shows you the difference between net income and cash accrual here the people that the the proponent of this method they said it, it's like it's more like the income statement so it's more like it's showing you net income on cash basis so it's showing you where the company bringing their cash what are they spending their cash so you can clearly see what's going on now if you're a prudent investor or you're a prudent analyst you would look at both but the point is they're both acceptable both give you the same answer now it comes to financing and investing there's no direct and indirect there's only one method for those okay and this is i'm going to show you a summary and this is the summary of all the adjustments for the direct method for the direct method these are all the adjustments oops one more time okay so this is if you want to convert from uh, sales to, to sales revenue which is cash receipts uh, receipts from rent you go from rent revenue you know then your payments how you convert your payments so pretty much you do you would have you do have everything that you need on the slide for the direct method okay so again the major uh, component of the direct method that need to, to, to be separately showing cash collected from customers 
interest and dividend, other operating cash receipts. Those are the positives, the receipts. Also, for the payments, you need to show what, what cash paid to employees and suppliers, interest paid, income taxes, and other operating cash payment. Those are also need to be shown separately at minimum when you are preparing the direct method. Okay? And that's about it for the direct method. If you take the formulas that I showed you on this screen and follow them, and hopefully you understand them, you understand how they work. If you don't understand them fully, go back to the indirect method. I explain the changes. And I explain, for example, if an asset, if an asset, so we are dealing here with current assets, but generally speaking, it doesn't have to be a current asset. When an asset goes up, it means you are spending cash. When, a lot, when an asset goes down, it means you are spending the asset and not spending cash. It's a positive cash. It means you paid for the asset before. For liabilities, kind of the opposite. For liabilities, when a liability goes up, it means you are bring in cash when a liability goes down it means you're paying down the liability negative cash flow so hopefully you remember those that we covered in the prior session which is they apply here in one way or another if you have any questions any concerns about this recording please let me know in the next topic we're going to keep looking with the statement of cash flows i'm going to be looking at special problems there are nothing nothing really special about them but the point is there are special circumstances where we have to deal with them and i would like to remind you to connect with me and visit my website and i strongly encourage you to subscribe it's an investment in your career good luck and study hard for your cpa exam